All right, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Single Security Initiative Countdown to Implementation webinar. Uh, we're ready to get started, so I'd like to introduce you to Bill Berliner, um, MCT's Director of Analytics. Take it away, Bill. Great, thank you, Nicolette. Um, as you can see, we're going to discuss, uh, we review the uh, initiative, what it is and what it's meant to do and how it's going to transpire. Um, we're going to talk about recent developments in terms of regulatory decisions and changes, as well as uh, the market. And uh, we'll also briefly discuss uh, MCT's plans for implementing the changes. Much of the information used in this um, webinar comes from the, uh, in, um, the conference that was uh, sponsored by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and took place in New York on March 4th. Uh, another excellent source of information is the Single Security Initiative Market Adoption Playbook. Uh, there were several uh, versions of this. Uh, the most recent one was updated in September of 2018. It's a very valuable resource for anybody that, uh, that needs more information on uh, the specific topics. And also, uh, we have, have had discussions with both uh, people at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, uh, SIFMA, the FHFA, and um, the major analytics providers, Bloomberg and TradeWeb. So let's talk about exactly what is going on for those who aren't uh, real familiar with it. Um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to issue fixed rate pools from a common platform. Um, so rather, and, and we're only talking here about fixed rates. Arms will not change, and it also, of course, it does not uh, impact uh, government issuance at all. But rather than going forward, we won't have Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac issued pools under their names. Everything will be issued under a platform known as the as Universal Mortgage Backed Securities or UMBS. Uh, pools will be backed by loans issued by either Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, at least at the initial issuance level of what uh, is being referred to as level one. So basically in a level one pool, loans from Fannie and Freddie won't be mixed or commingled. There's also no cross collateralization they will be issued off this UMBS platform, but there'll be only Fannie or Freddie issued uh, or backed loans in those securities. There can be resecuritizations done, so-called level two securities, either uh, what were called giants and megas, as well as Remix, that can consist of both Fannie and Freddie Mac uh, pools. We'll discuss that. It's not super important to this presentation. Just keep that in mind. Um, UMBS are going to have the structure of Fannie Mae pools. Most importantly, they'll have 55 delay days starting, you know, measured from the, the first day of month one. Basically, they will pay on the 25th day of the second month. Um, keep in mind that uh, Freddie Mac Gold pools pay on the 15th day, so they'll have uh, 45 days. Of, they currently have 45 days of delay. Dealing with that difference between Fannie and Freddie uh, pools has, has probably been the most challenging issue in this initiative. Um, but um, so we'll discuss that a little bit more. But that's basically UMBS are effectively taking over for Fannie. And the go live date is scheduled for June 3rd of uh, this year. Uh, that's going to be when uh, Fannie and Freddie both start issuing. UMBS pools, as well as the exchanges that we're going to talk about will uh, start taking place. Um, the rationale for the change is simply uh, to um, eliminate the difference in liquidity between Fannie and Freddie securities and eliminate Freddie Mac's structural execution disadvantage. As we'll see, uh, Freddie Mac, despite the fact that they have fewer delay days, have traditionally have long traded behind uh, Fannie Mae's, mainly because of liquidity concerns um, and other, um, you know, concerns with, um, you know, the the, um, uh, the structure, not, not necessarily a structural consideration, it's mainly liquidity. Um, but they, you know, the volumes of Freddie Mac securities traded are much smaller than Fannie's. And uh, that liquidity difference has really created um, an advantage, uh, disadvantage for Freddie Mac, which they've had to overcome by things called the like the MAP adjustment, which is basically paying uh, the difference in execution to make uh, even execution for uh, issuing Fannie or Freddie pools. Um, this will hopefully eliminate that. 
Uh, pools will be issued off this new common securitization platform. And the platform is in it, um, administered by a joint venture called the Common, called common Securitization Solutions, LLC. Uh, I emphasize it's not a merger of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, this whole enterprise, but they're going to issue off of this uh, platform administered by CSS. As I mentioned, it impacts only conventional fixed rate securities. The market is also going to adopt Fannie Mae prefixes. So 30 years will continue to have the CL prefixes. 15 years will continue to have CI. They'll take the, um, uh, the, uh, the Fannie Mae nomenclature, essentially. Um, and effectively, UMBS takes over for Fannie Mae. I mentioned that uh, how gold is traditionally traded cheap to Fannie's. If you think about it, the, the difference in delay days is worth anywhere from two to four, 30 seconds, depending on market conditions, depending on the coupon, et cetera. But the fact is that they traded cheap to it. So if the difference is, uh, if the value difference is three, 30 seconds, uh, positive in favor of gold, and but they continue to gold continue to trade at a three thirty second concession. That means they're trading six thirty seconds uh, cheap to their true economic value. Um, and this you can see this has been the case, um, you know, going back uh, even into the nineties. Uh, I tracked here just uh, for uh, three and a half and fours, uh, going back to two thousand thirteen. You see, you have seen episodes where gold have traded better, but it was. Uh, through uh, fairly limited um, uh, periods of time. So uh, a key point is that all TBA deliverable pools will now have 55 delay days. Now the question is, okay, what happens to 45-day delay gold pools, the so-called legacy pools? Well, legacy gold pools can be exchanged for so-called mirror pools, which have 55 delay days. They're effectively backed by the same pools of loans, but instead of paying on the 15th of the following month, they're going to pay on the 25th of the month. Um, exchangers will also receive a cash payment to compensate for receiving what is economically a war security, security with 10 extra delay days, which has an economic value. Um, it's going to be calculated daily by coupon as an even OAS value between 45 and 55 day pool. Uh, Freddie Mac will also be calculating it based on specified pool categories. So they'll be quoting it by coupon as well as for things like low val, et cetera, because that does impact the uh, valuation. And that, um, that payment will be recalculated on a daily basis. It'll be calculated using uh, constant OAS from Bloomberg's model. Um, you can also get an estimate of it by running even yields at the same prepayment speed as I've done later on in this presentation, but it'll be calculated on a constant OAS basis. Now, mirror pools will have a new pool number. Okay? They'll have a different prefix. It'll be using Fannie Mae's descriptors, as I mentioned. They'll have new QCIP numbers, and they'll all they have new issuance dates. And investors will be able to go online and look up how much of each pool has been exchanged because the exchanges do not have to be done on an all or nothing basis. You can do partial. So you might see that a 50,000 piece of a pool might be exchanged or on a $10 million pool, 7 million might be exchanged at any point in time. That will be posted uh, by Freddie Mac on a daily basis. <clears throat> so the, the uh, transition is gonna take place with the TBA market uh, Fannie Mae TBAs will then will now be labeled as UMBS TBAs. So then, at that point, pools that can be delivered, and this is in uh, for June settlement TBAs, pools that can be delivered into TBAs will be new issue UMBS pools, legacy Fannie Mae pools, and Freddie Mac mirror pools, i.e. the exchange pools that uh, have the 55 uh, days of delay. Now, SIFMA approved changes to the delivery rules on March 7th. Uh, that was the last remaining hurdle before implementation. There was some talk that SIFMA was hesitating to approve it, and says, but what they were really waiting for was the FHFA to uh, put forth their rules on so-called alignment, which I'll discuss uh, later in this uh, presentation. 
Uh, but it was it was not it was really not in doubt that SIPM was going to approve this. But this uh, they did formally approve changes to the delivery rules on uh, March 7th. The non-deliverable uh, Freddie Mac pools will receive new tickers. So, for example, the uh, Freddie pools with 100 to 105 to 125 LPVs, which are currently issued under they're called U6 pools, but the, currently the ticker is FGHLU6. They're going to be under now be issued under FRHLU6 pools. Same thing with uh, super conforming pools. Instead of being FGJMT6 pools, they'll be FRJMT6 pools. So it has a slight difference for uh, those non-deliverable categories. But again, that's going to be under the new UMBS uh, issuance, and they again will have 55 days of delay. The gold program is essentially going to roll off over time and is being essentially put to bed. Now, June uh, UMBS TBAs have started trading already. Basically, it's the way it is now, the third month. Um, you can see on this screen taken a few days ago, uh, UM 30s, uh, the universal third, um, MBS 30 years, uh, started trading on March 12th, the day after, um, after notification. And UM 15s first started trading on March 15th, uh, the day after uh, Class B notification this month. And you can see that uh, April and May are still quoted, and you can see that these tabs are for FN30 and FN15. Uh, you can see that April and May are still labeled the same way, and now June, there's June and then parentheses UM. And you can see that the role, May, June, is Fanny to UM. Um, once we transition to where June is the front month, the FN30 label will be changed and then show UM30, and that'll take place on May 10th, the day after class A notification in May, and the FN15 will change to UM15 on May 15th, the day after class B notification. Uh, at that point in time, it's unclear. The expectation is that um, uh, the major providers, this is Bloomberg screen, uh, TradeWeb also, that they'll, that, um, the gold market for 30s and 15s will be dropped, but it's not clear what's going to happen to that market, as I'll, as I'll discuss. The key topics that were discussed at the March conference uh, on March 4th in New York was what happens to Freddie Mac, you know, because that, that you know, the transition of Freddie Mac from the current environment to the new UMBS uh, marketplace uh, was very complicated. So. Um, it's unlikely, most, most observers think that gold TBAs won't be supported after June 3rd, but it's possible that dealers may still offer TBAs in it. You know, at, my understanding is that TradeWeb and Bloomberg won't have screens for it, but it's possible that dealers will continue to offer it, although the consensus is that they probably won't. Now, Freddie Gold pools may or may not continue to trade as specified pools. <clears throat> Keep in mind, the, um, the ideal would be for investors that hold gold pools to exchange them and then either trade them as specified or do the TBA market. But it's very possible that dealers will make markets in non-exchanged gold pools. Why they might, there's a number of reasons why they might do that, mainly being if they happen to think that uh, they don't like the, uh, the exchange value that's being uh, quoted on an even OAS basis, they may just prefer to, uh, to trade as specified pools. Uh, although um, it's unclear as to how, uh, how aggressively, there was actually a poll um, taken at the conference as to how how soon you expect to. This is for investors. How soon do you expect to um, to exchange your gold pools for mirror pools? And by far the number one answer, I think, at 55 or 60 percent uh, response rate, was on, we don't know. So it's not clear how aggressively holders how aggressive holders are going to be in exchanging their golds for mirrors to trade them, or whether they'll try to continue to trade them as uh, golds. Exchanges can be made either through dealers and on a no cost basis. There's no uh, charge for exchanging, or directly with uh, Freddie Mac using TradeWeb. Now, how much again is exchange, or whether pools are exchanged or not? Um, it's going to depend on the amount of the exchange payment. And I mentioned it's constant OAS 
off the top, you know, generally speaking, you're talking about it's worth somewhere between two and three thirty seconds, um, as well as the tax treatment. Now, the IRS has made a statement that the exchanges, exchanging a gold pool for a mirror pool is not a taxable event, but they have been uh, studiously quiet on whether the payment itself is ta a taxable uh, income. They have not uh, issued any um, uh, advisory uh, to that, and um, the thought is that they probably won't. They probably will say something to the effect of consult your tax advisor. I've been told that Freddie Mac will not be reporting these payments as taxable income. They won't be reporting to the IRS, but it's conceivable that the IRS may, you know, may come to some conclusion over time that it is or it isn't taxable. But for the time being, they've been silent on that issue. Um, so one thing that's interesting to note is that um, in the current market, um, Gold pools have started to trade at a premium to, to Fannie's, which in an economic sense they should, but for some coupons, they're trading in excess of the economic value. Like, for example, uh, gold four and a half um, have traded in the neighborhood of about 630 seconds over Fannie's. And if the even uh, OAS and even yield is worth 330 seconds, that means that they're um, basically trading in excess of their economic value, which is really interesting. It's possibly re it reflects you know, that exchange mechanism, which is suddenly allowed an arbitrage to be created when they were trading cheaper. Um, now, you know, why it's trading in a concession, it could be liquidity concerns, um, people not wanting to get short, et cetera. But the fact is that it, was, you know, uh, it has been trading at an excess of what the economic value worth, but I think if nothing else, it's just extremely interesting. Now, the second thing was this concept of alignment. Now, for the UMBS markets to function well, the perception that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac pools uh, perform similarly is critical. And the definition of perform in, in, you know, for regulatory purposes has really been you know, focused on prepayment performance. We'll discuss a little bit that, you know, that may be overlooking some things, but that's what the, uh, uh, you know, um, the regulators are concerned with, that if one enterprise's MBS are perceived to be better uh, than the other, mainly through favorable prepayment behavior, investors may place stipulations or steps on their TBA trade to deliver Fannie or Freddie only, which would defeat the purpose of this entire initiative. It would tend to fragment the market uh, rather than unify it. And that would be probably the um, a worst case uh, scenario because stiff TBA trades are not netted out. So that would make uh, you basically fragment the market into Fannie and Freddie only TBAs uh, rather than just being UMBS TBAs and would really hurt liquidity rather than help it. So the uh, regulators, as well as Freddie and Fannie, are making an extremely strong uh, effort to make sure that doesn't ta uh, happen. And the FHA, FHFA issued new rules on February 28th to both improve alignment and monitor alignment. Basically, they require that programs, policies, and practices one enterprise must quote unquote align with the other enterprises, programs, policies, and practices. So they can't, you know, while you have, you can have different programs, generally speaking, Fannie and Freddie Mae, while they can compete with each other, they can't really start doing things that may that create a material differences in the pools issued by Fannie or Freddie. Um, they've also announced new procedures for monitoring and reporting and investigating prepayment differences between Fannie and Freddie issued cohorts. They also did change pooling rules. Uh, previously, up to now, um, you've had a 250 maximum basis point. Uh, difference in the note rate of a loan that can be placed into a pool to the coupon rate. So in other words, you can actually have a, um, a uh, say a six and a half percent uh, note rate loan get placed into a uh, Fannie or Freddie pool with a pool coupon of 4%. That's been the rules for, um, uh, for uh, years. Ginnie Mae has had a different set of rules uh, but that's been the rules for Fannie and Freddie. Now it's been changed. The, loan, uh, the loans in a pool 
can't have a note rate more than 112 and a half basis points higher than the pool's coupon rate. There's also um, a maximum of 50 basis points of servicing, including both required and excess, can be held. The remainder has to be sold to enterprises at the uh, buyer multiple. So for example, a five and an eight loan being pooled, uh, assuming you have 45 basis points of a guarantee fee, they could be pulled into, into either a UMBS four or four and a half pool. They can't be pulled anymore into a three and a half. Uh, it wouldn't make economic sense to do it under most cases, but it was possible. Now it can't be done. And if the, um, the pooler uh, utilize the option of pooling into a UMBS4, uh, the issuer can retain a maximum of 50 basis points of servicing, 25 required and 25 of excess. That remaining 17 and a half basis points of servicing has to be sold to Fannie and Freddie at the prevailing buy multiple. Now, what they also didn't address is the concept of a post-conservatorship world. Keep in mind Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are still operating under government conservatorship, and they have since uh, 2008. Now, these new rules assume that Fannie and Freddie are equally creditworthy. So if they're privatized or taken out of conservatorship and one subsequently runs into financial problems, you know, you expect that investors would start doing SNP trades again, which again would tend to fragment the market. So that has implications for future GSE reform initiatives and how aggressively these can be privatized because they really have to both have the uh, perception of being equal credit for the TBA for this common securitization platform to work as anticipated. Okay. Um, now, in terms of resecuritization, that was also addressed because there were obviously investors there. There were certain things that uh, I didn't. I'm not going to get into in this presentation, like how investor indexes are going to be handled, although they have to be changed to reflect this. But they also did discuss uh, things like uh, resecuritization. I mentioned level one pools will be issued by either Fannie or Freddie. There's no commingling of collateral between Fannie and Freddie. There's no cross collateralization. It's basically a Fannie pool or a Freddie pool, but issued under this UMBS platform. Um, resecuritizations, however, both in terms of, su of what they call super pools, which is basically will replace megas and giants in this new UMBS framework uh, can have a combination of both Fannie and Freddie pools. You can also create Remix with combination of UMBS Fannie or Freddie issued securities. So basically Freddie Mac can issue a Remix that theoretically is backed by UMBS issued by Fannie Mac. That's an entirely new uh, development that CMO traders are going to have to uh, uh, are going to have to be uh, cognizant of. So uh, for, our, for our reporting purposes, MCT will change uh, how uh, TBAs are going to be reported uh, and shown on our report. FNCL, 30-year Fannies, will basically transition to be called UM30s. <clears throat> uh, FNCI, 15-year Fannies, will then transition to be UM15. Um, to the extent that they're going to uh, um, still be in place, Freddie and uh, 15 and 30 year TBAs will continue to be reported to the extent that they're in existence. Now, one thing that no way that there was actually something in Christman uh, a few weeks ago about what they're going to be called. And somebody had the very uh, entertaining idea of calling them uh, unis for 30 years and punies for 15 years. Now, that was cute and, uh, you know, amusing. But, you know, we're in the uh, we're in the accuracy business. So we're not going to do that because, God forbid, someone hears a P that wasn't spoken or doesn't hear a P that was spoken, and suddenly you're selling, uh, you know, 30-year uh, threes instead of 15-year uh, threes and uh, doing that, that trade if you don't discover it in a market that's just gapped by you know, almost a point on some math and money coupons, that would be uh, pretty damaging. So uh, we're just going to call them UM30s and UM15s. Now, the model itself should translate pretty, pretty uh, seamlessly. The positions, there shouldn't be an issue in changing over the labeling. The exposures and durations are going to continue to look the way they are. And uh, Best X will now have to take into account the UMBS valuations rather than Fannie valuations. But we expect that to go uh, fairly um, 
you know, uh, we expect that to go without incident. Um, now, clients that create their own pools need to be sure that they can create and deliver new UMBS. So in terms of they have to be cognizant of their in-house reporting that they report the new security uh, accurately. And they also have to make sure that their custodians and delivery banks and anybody that actually takes delivery of their pools from Fannie or Freddie and then delivers them to, account, um, to their counterparty uh, is aware of these changes and is set up um, to do these changes. Now, the changes are scheduled to be implemented once the June TBAs become the front month. And we're hoping to do it for, you know, once uh, 30 and 15 year conventionals become the front month. So initially we were expecting it to be implemented sometime around May 15th after class B notification. Now, the, uh, but keep in mind, however, that that weekend uh, happens to correspond with the, um, that, the following weekend happens to correspond with the, um, uh, the NBA's national conference. So people from both, you know, a lot of shops, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, edge advisors are gonna be at the conference as well as uh, originators. And we don't think it's a great idea for people, you know, to have a transition of this magnitude take place uh, while, while a lot of people are out of town. So that's why we're looking at doing it possibly the weekend of the 11th, although that hasn't been finally decided upon but that's kind of what we are have been discussing. Alternatively, it could have been done, being done the week after, but that's in front of Memorial Day weekend. It's also less than desirable. Um, so that, uh, you know, for the uh, MCT's clients, uh, stay tuned on that. We will be, uh, we'll inform you of when we're gonna make that transition. Uh, we'll be actually balancing, making sure that everything translates over to the new environment uh, accurately. Um, now, you know, just to editorialize, to wrap up, um, this is the biggest change, in my opinion, this is the biggest change in the TBA market, to the MBS market um, in its 35 plus year history. You know, the only thing that's comparable to it was when Freddie Mac changed from the old green securities to gold. Uh, but this is even a bigger, secure, uh, bigger change because of this um, necessity to uh, exchange all these legacy pools. So we're determined that it's going to go smoothly. Everybody in the industry is um, uh, is making the push to make this transition uh, be as seamless as possible, and uh, to show the confidence of uh, everyone that this will take place on schedule. Um, we have a new uh, swag that was uh, distributed at the conference, and you can see that they're um, they're confident. Single Security 2019. Um, but uh, we're very optimistic and we think it's going to be a good change for the market, you know, with uh, some caveats that will, uh, that will bear watching. So now, if uh, anyone has any questions, we would be happy to uh, take them to the extent uh, that we can. And uh, any uh, additional questions that you have, uh, shooting questions to us at the, my email addresses below, um, as well as uh, on our web MCT's website. Uh, there was also a, a write-up that we put together um, on, on our website that was posted for any further questions. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Bill. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, there are no questions at this time, but if you do have questions, feel, please feel free to direct them to Bill. His email is on this slide. Uh, I will be sending out the... Uh, slides in an email to all the registrants who have RSVP'd and then around next this time next week we'll be updating the existing blog with the uh, new the news that we learned from the conference uh, thanks to Bill so thank you all for attending and have a great week